Speaking of creativity, let's talk about the improvements to the oil paint filter. Yes! They've created it so that it accesses your GPU so you get live, interactive, immediate feedback on what you're doing. So if you don't know how to apply this, let me show you. I'm gonna hit Command or Control J to duplicate my layer over here so I'm not working on the original layer. And then I think I actually wanna separate the squirrel from the background so I can manipulate them individually. I'm gonna click on the object selection tool, see if it finds it, see it's still looking. It's gonna figure out where everything is. Okay, it found my squirrel. It didn't do anything with the background, but it did find my log. Okay, good. Well, then I'll separate it to the squirrel, the log, and the background. So to activate a selection with the object selection tool, just click on it. And you see those marching ants? Then I'll come up to select and mask, see how it did around the hair. It didn't do bad, but it didn't do great. But we have this refine hair button that will refine around that hair. Watch this. Look, is that not amazing? And then I'll come back in with the traditional quick selection tool. Make my brush a little bigger with the right bracket key. And it's like, I know I want all of that. Remember, it's AI learning. This AI intelligence. So the more you tweak it, the more passes it's going to make and try to figure out what it is you want. And then I can use this refine edge brush, the one that's right up here in the far left corner. And then I'm just going to say, you know, I think there's more hair in here. Make sure you get all of it. And I definitely think there's more whiskers. Yeah, look at all those whiskers. Make sure you get all those whiskers. Remember, I like to set my radius somewhere between one and four. That looks nice. Smooth it, feather it between one or so. Feather, I always do less than a pixel. And I'm going to output this new layer with layer mask. So now I have my squirrel all by himself. Now I'm going to turn on this back layer, go back to the background, and I'm going to hover over the stump. Click it to activate it. I'm just going to double check it in the select and mask so that it's not near as complicated as the other one. And I'll just get an output that to its own layer mask. So notice what I've done. I now have the squirrel by itself. I have the stump by itself. And then I have the background and the squirrel by themselves. Now, what I could do, and you don't have to do this, but what I could do is click on the squirrel mask, hold the shift key, command or control click on the tree stump mask. See how it selected, it intersected and added both of those selections together. I'll go up to select, down to modify and expand and maybe nine pixels. See how it went further around? Probably needs to be bigger than that. So I'll do select, modify, expand. And in this case, I'll maybe do 20 more pixels just because of the stray hairs. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to edit, fill and I'm going to choose content aware and say, get rid of the squirrel and the log. I just want a clean background. I just want a plate. Okay, it didn't do a great job. It didn't do bad, I D. So now what do I do? I have a lot of options. I probably just come to the patch tool, make a big circle of just a chunk of that, drag it over and say, replace that. And then replace that. And then replace that. So what did I just do? I just gave myself a nice clean background for this squirrel to be on. So now I have 100% control. So I'll click on the squirrel. I'll go to filter, down to stylize, over to oil paint. And now it's, see how it's instant. I drag this over to stylization. Do you see how it makes instant updates? Let me zoom in a bit. So I'll change the stylization. Now, one of the reasons the oil filter, the oil paint filter gets such a bad name is because of this lighting is typically checked. And that is trying to cast a shadow from the actual brush strokes if this were actually oil paint on a canvas. But I find that it tends to ruin the effect for me. So I, I typically just toggle that off and I play with my bristle detail and I play with my stylization. And the way to do it is max each one out. And that's gonna show you what they're doing. So I'll pull down the bristle tail, detail. Okay, so it looks like what? Looks like most of the manipulation to this image is happening with the stylization and the cleanliness. So those are the two most powerful sliders. So I'm gonna click okay, and that's pretty harsh, right? But what do I have? I have my original squirrel down here. If I ever need to go back down to him, I can do that. But I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Click command zero. Okay, I like that. I'm going to click on the stump, and now I'm gonna go apply the oil filter to just the stump. Remember, if you choose the very first filter, that's the last application you did. So this would be that intensity of oil paint applied, which I don't wanna duplicate, right? I want a lesser effect of oil paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down this and this, cause I don't want this to be that distracting. Pull it down, pull it down, pull the stylization down. Do you see how that's much more minimal down here? I'll click okay. And now the background. Let's oil paint the background and see how that does. By separating the subject and the stump from the background, I've given myself total control over each of the independent elements in the scene. I recommend you do this whenever you can. And see here, I'm gonna really jack it up. And because it's a super soft blurry background, it does very, very little. Now watch this. 
Now I'm gonna double click the property so it'll collapse so I can see what I'm doing. I wanna push all of this up to the top by hitting Command Option Shift Letter E or Control Alt Shift Letter E. So I can now select my three separated subjects, hit Command or Control G, put them in a group, turn them off. So I went from here, which is a really nice shallow depth of field shot isolating the subject of the squirrel to making it more of an illustration. But if I didn't like that eye, because that's a little too much, I can add a layer mask, hit B for the brush, left bracket key to make my brush a little smaller, and paint back in that regular eye. And then I can tap two for 20% in case some of this is a little too intense. Some of this is a little too stylized for me. So here and there, yeah, dude, stylized. How about it looks freaking ridiculous? Soften that up a bit, dude, soften it up. I can go in and paint back in a little bit of that detail that if it's bothering me, that it looks a little too painted. Do you see how that's a nice integration? Then I can push all of that to its own layer, Command, Option, Shift, Letter E. And now I'm gonna go over to Camera Raw for my branding editing. This is where I wanna put my touches. Definitely want a little bit of clarity, great chance for some saturation. I think this will be a happier, more brighter image, something like that. Would I worry about the shadow detail? I think that's that's a wonderful way to go. How high can I pull that? See, I don't want your eyes to bleed, right? Saturation will make your eyes bleed. Vibrance tends to only make the color channels brighter, more saturated that need it. So I'm gonna pull that up to there. I'm gonna pull up the dehaze to saturate it a bit more, make it look a little darker, and I'm gonna click OK. Now, generally, I like to go too far. Okay, I think we made a lot of nice improvements to that to make it really jump off the page. But you can always lower the opacity to mix the two if you want to. You can actually duplicate this layer and choose a blend mode to exaggerate the effect that you just did, like overlay, which will add a lot of contrast and color. And in particular with that overlay blend mode, if you were to go up to filter down to blur and Gaussian blur, you can kind of drag in a more of a dreamy effect of the application. Now again, Photoshop does everything at 100%. If it looks too crazy, which it may, just pull down the saturation a touch. And if it really oversaturated it, you know what to do. Just grab that hue and saturation adjustment layer and pull the saturation down just until it looks nice to you. I'm now gonna select every single thing we've done from top to bottom by shift clicking on the top and bottom layer, clicking Command or Control G, turning it off. Here's where we started, here's where we ended up. That looks really exciting. Hey, if you like this video and it helps, you can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>